Bucks 31, Eagles 15, talking football, a uh, quick recap of the playoff games. I know we should be talking about the Bucks more so because they are actually a Super Bowl contender and obviously will. But I do feel like the story of this game is the Eagles being in the playoffs. 0-7 against playoff teams when you include this game. And, like, what do you make of Philly at this point? Like, what, what do you make of Philly and Hurts? Because this was a horrible matchup, so I don't want to totally judge Hurts on it. But it was this was, like, the worst possible matchup for the Eagles because of the the, the Bucks were never going to give them a favorable run front. And it was going to no. like, okay, come and beat us versus the pass. Because I think the Bucks, you know, have some flaws uh, on that team. But it's just like the Eagles, it seems like, yeah, it's cool they got to the playoffs, but I don't know if that style is ever going to be winning with him at quarterback. You want to talk like big picture thoughts on the Eagles season or like just thoughts on like this game and like how they played? Because clearly, I mean, how they played is, I mean, not good. But my but thoughts I think it's, on – I think it's both. Like I think what they all have been this season is what they were in this game when they're playing a good playoff team. Um, and even like a the other borderline team they played, they lost to in the Chargers. Well, I'll give you my thoughts on on their season, big picture thoughts, because I actually consider it very much a success. I really do. Bobby, what were our thoughts about the Eagles heading into the season? They're going to win four games. They're going to finish last place in the NFC East. Like we were picking Washington Giants and Cowboys to all be divvying it up, you know, up at the top. You know, and really, I think best case scenario, you thought the Eagles would have a Washington like season. They made the playoffs. And what do good teams do? Good team, you you have this line all the time. Good team or you know, good to average teams beat bad football teams. And that is what the Eagles did this year. So when projecting and when reflecting on what they were projected to do this year, just before the season even began, where people were expecting them to be really a laughing stock and to see how they won football games, and Hertz did enough to win those games. But obviously, you look the other the other side of that coin is. They probably do have a quarterback problem and you need to throw the ball in today's NFL and they can't do that on a consistent basis. And Jalen Hurts does cost them in some big key moments and big key situations when they need it against good teams. Yeah, and I agree. Like, yes, their season is very much a success. They have three first round picks. If you're an Eagles fan, you go into this offseason excited, except for the quarterback spot. Yeah. Like, yes, can they run that that read option offense, you know, the, yeah, where they're, you know, fit. When like when you have a team that's not going to stack the box and come at you and have dudes in that front like the Bucks do, like yeah, you're going to have some really good rushing games and they're going to be the top of the league as far as rushing. But it's just, you know, there's questions about Lamar Jackson as a playoff QB, and Jalen Hurts isn't even in that same stratosphere. No, as him, you know, where I do think Lamar can get there and win it eventually. You know, there's still there's definitely flaws to it, but Hurts just isn't in that same stratosphere, and I just feel like. Like the Eagles with a with three first round picks, if they like a QB, like I don't know, I'm probably thinking about taking one of them. There's also a problem too, where PFF had the tweet: Howie Roseman should be considered a executive of the year. No, he should not. They whiffed on Jalen Rager. I mean, that was a huge whiff, and they dropping punts today, and he shouldn't even be returning punts mean. anyway. That that seems like just a situation where they just want to hey, this is a first-round pick that we want to get the ball in his hands somehow. So Jalen Rager's a miss. They don't do enough. They've, I feel like the Eagles have had a problem for years where they don't do enough to get the ball in Miles Sanders' hands enough, and he doesn't score touchdowns. Flat out, Miles Sanders just does not score touchdowns. So there are some, you know, the Eagles, the very talented offensive line, but still there are some key areas on this team where they've they've drafted two, two wide receivers in the first round of the NFL draft last couple of years, but you still feel like they have a skill position problem. And they're not getting the ball to their skill position players enough. So, yes, they have a quarterback problem. But then also, offensive line does help. They still do have a skill position problem there, too. Well, now, we're ragging on the Eagles. Now, to, to their credit, this was the worst matchup they could draw yes. in the first round. There's not a, I'm, I'm talking AFC teams, too. I don't think there's a worse matchup they could have drawn. One, because what the Bucs can do on offense. Um, but the Bucs were never going to give them a favorable run front, not because they're playing against the Eagles and their rush heavy attack, because that's what the Bucs do. That's what the Bucs do every single week. It's why they have one of the best rushing defenses in the NFL, because they have those two linebackers in the front four of JPP, Vea. Um, and they also know, got Levante David back, which, uh, you know, they were talking on the broadcast about how the Bucs defense has kind of wavered off the last couple of weeks. Well, people love to talk about Devin White. Um, but Levante David, I mean, I, I can argue that those guys are right up there with each other. If not, I give the edge to Levante David. I mean, he is just a fantastic football player. Getting him back 
was huge for this defense. And I think you saw it. You, know, you saw the, the benefits of it today. I, I mean, I wouldn't pick the Eagles versus any team in the NFC in a single game, but like this was by far their worst matchup because of that run thing. And you see besides that Boston Scott touchdown, what they have. Um, they didn't even get 30, 30, 30 carry. I know that's the bucks, but they had like 16, 16 carries for 61 yards. So they couldn't even average four yards a pop. They didn't even run backs. a play on the other side of the 50 yard line until like the middle back end of the second quarter. Well, and that's the thing is they started like, okay, we're going to have to start throwing the ball downfield. Like this is not working. And Hertz would make a big play. And then the next two plays would be a, a ball. that's a dropped interception or an interception or just erratic passes. Yeah. And it's just like, he's just not at that point right now. Um, and I just don't know if he will be. But this was this was the worst. I honestly, this is, you know, once people get to know us, they'll realize we're not like hot takey like type people. But if there was, you couldn't do this because it's just there's more to football than you know plugging guys in. But they would have been better off with Gardner Minshew for this game. Yeah, for this game versus this team, they would have been better off with Gardner Minshew. Yep. Yeah, just a little little late on reads. I mean the the interception that he. You know that uh, that Devonte uh, that Devonta Smith was target on. I mean, that was he needs to have that ball out, and Smith was open. That was a touchdown at the end of the half. You know, but safety does a good job coming over, making plays. I also need to give a shout out to. I mean, these these Bucks, the Bucks secondary, which during the middle of the season they were getting a little bit of a heat, where it's like, you know what, you're not going to run on this on this Bucks defensive line and with those linebackers. But this secondary, you could throw the ball around a little bit, both in the running game and you know in the passing game, making plays in the air. Um, Carlton Davis, who's been a getting cornerback healthier has helped them a lot too. Yeah. Getting healthier, but Carlton Davis cornerback, they drafted him in the second round of 2018. He had a hell of a game safeties, Jordan Whitehead, who was in the fourth round in 2018, uh, Jordan Whitehead's primarily a, that box guy. He was flying around the football field, Mike Edwards, who's a backup safety, but he was getting some good snaps too. And then Antoine Winfield, you know, we know him as that free safety who can make plays on the football. He made a nice play in the second half too. So I know the Bucks secondary has gotten a, a little bit of hate as the season has gone on. They played very well today, also combined with Jalen Hurts being late on throws. But even when Hurts was late on throws, Bucks secondary got there, didn't allow them to capitalize at all. Now let's talk about the team that won more. Yes. Uh, the Bucks. Obviously a really good game for them, but the Bucks, the Bucks goals are a lot bigger than this game. You know, they are one of those Super Bowl, bu- Super Bowl or bust teams. You know, there's unless they're winning the Super Bowl, it's, it is a failure for them. They'll play the Cowboys if they win. Um, and I know people, a lot of people will be watching this afterwards. Um, and if the 49ers win, they'll face the winner of Rams cards. What matchup do you think they're fearing the most? Because in order for me, it's Rams. Rams, Cowboys, Cardinals is like their worst, is like their worst matchups. Yeah. Um, why do you why do you think they fear the they, they fear the Rams more? Because the Rams can protect and Stafford can throw balls with anticipation to take advantage of a, a not great secondary, and they're not going to rely on the run. The Cardinals are going to, the Cardinals, I, the Cardinals, I just, I think are our worst team and the Cowboys. The Cowboys are actually, we saw in week one are a good matchup versus Tampa. It's like, okay, if you're going to stack that box, we got wide receivers who are going to go and win. Yeah, that, that's my thinking where the Cowboys defense is better than the Rams. And I think the Cowboys have more talented skill position players. So it's actually kind of crazy how similar the offenses are in terms of the the, the talent level, right? Except the running back positions a little bit. You you give the running back position to the Cowboys. So I don't know. I definitely, I mean, I, I think they're rooting to play the Cardinals <laughs> without yeah. a doubt. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, do you worry about them without Godwin and Antonio Brown? Now, they got it yes. figured out as the game went along. But you could tell, like, the timing isn't perfect with Tyler Johnson. Um, even a ball he caught, like, he kind of, like, stopped on. And you could tell, like, there's balls, like, going right at his fingertips. This was very early in the game. But, you know, Bucks were – it was looking a little sloppy. And then it wasn't until that Barnett roughing the passer that wasn't a roughing the passer. But I guess he got to call it. But he did let up and he helped Brady up, whatever. It's just the way the NFL is going to be played now, I guess. And also you have Tom Brady, at quarterback, so they're going to call that. They were not looking very sharp, and it wasn't until that Barnett roughing the passer that they went on to score that first touchdown, and then it's like, oh, you kind of feel like the game's over already. So, yeah, without them, even it's even they even lost their center, and they lost Trishan Morphs. So that's that's a big – those are some huge center, losses. I think both those guys should be back, though, Nick. I mean, Worfs tried to play. The center came back in, I think. Yeah. Um, so, like, if let's go even further. If you're playing the – pack, if they're playing the Packers, are you – I know it's Tom Brady, and, yeah, like, Tom Brady always – 
seems to make a way. But like to me, that's like a like I'm hammering the Packers for that game. No, I'm still not. That's well, that's a game I'm not going to bet. But for me, even with even without Godwin, it's still Bron- uh, Broncos. It's still Buccaneers or bust for Super Bowl until somebody else can play well enough. Because there have been too many teams this year that have been too inconsistent, and I still feel like the Bucks are still the cream of the crop right now. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, I would pick the Rams and and the Packers over them. But again, they they have Tom Brady. They have that pass rush uh, ability up front, and you know, running the ball is a little more important in the playoffs. But the the Bucks aren't great at running the ball either. I mean, they have, their running backs had thirty pops for ninety seven yeah. yards. You know, a lot of that was in garbage time. This is the year where I think where last year I think Bruce Arians tried to get the running game going a little bit more. But I think this year is the year where Brady is better than he was last year. And I think they're just saying F it. And we're just going to let him throw two out of every three plays. We're just going to let him throw. And there it's so strange how usually like good teams, like if you look at the pass to run ratio across the NFL, you're going to see a lot of the bad teams in the NFL. They have very high pass rates because they're constantly behind in games. And then even the teams that typically throw the ball a lot, they'll probably be middle of the pack because they're winning games, right? Doesn't matter. Tampa Bay is one of those outlier teams that they are throwing the ball. They're throwing it more than Kansas City. They're throwing it more than Buffalo. Um, So I think this is the year where Arians is like, you know what? We're just going to put it in Brady's hands. And also Gronk. Gronk is that is that factor is that X factor where he's better than he was last year. He has a better connection, better field than what he had last year. And also that there was a touchdown a run that they had where he just sealed that edge and he just collapses his guy down. Gronk is such a weapon, even when he's not targeted with the football that I think he is that X factor that, you know, you saw him cook up and heat up during the postseason last year. Well, he's been like that during the entire regular season. So even if you're without one of those wide receivers, you have Gronk. All right. All right. You got anything else? No, no. Uh, I'm, I wish the four o'clock game today was at eight o'clock, but I'm, I'm most excited for this 49er Cowboy game. And that, that'll be the recap that's coming in the next. Man. All right. Appreciate you guys. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.